Welcome back to South Florida. The Blackhawks get ready to meet the homestanding Panthers. We'll take a look at the four goaltending matchup tonight as you look at Corey Crawford, who four straight games now has given up two goals or fewer, and he has done that in five of his seven starts. Well, those numbers real solid at uh, his end. Down on the other side, another Stanley Cup winner. That's Tim Thomas, who after uh, a year off has been able to come back and play pretty well. He's He missed four games with a groin injury, but in his last two starts, he's given up four goals in 71 shots. So after laboring a little bit with uh, his midsection, he seems to be back in form, and we're underway now in the first. And this first period of Blackhawks hockey is brought to you by Chevy and ChevyTribesChicago.com. Well, the Panthers, Matthias, is checked by Seabrook at center ice. Bounce loose to Duncan Keith. And Keith put it to the right wing boards. Taves is there, and he gets the line. Taves looking to center one, kicks to the six side, quick shot, good recovery by Weaver to make the block. Yeah, and center lane drive, sorry, Pat, by Hosa. Kind of opened things up for Saad just a little bit, but that pass just in his back skate. Now Hosa will turn back. Hawks are now again able to make maintain possession while making a change. Then a bad pass picked off, and Weaver sends it deep. Oduya leaves for Jomerson. This pass too far for Kane. That went out of the zone, though. Would have been offside, but the Hawks get it back and clear it into Florida ice. Here's one of their young D-men, Kulikov, able to clear it to center. Christopher Stieg, the ex-Blackhawk, moves in against Oduya, trying to shoulder him out of the way, but Oduya went nowhere. And now they fight for it along the board. Sharp came to dig it loose and clear it. Great board battle there, Johnny Oduya, Pat. You pointed it out, but good support too. Patrick Sharp realizing there was going to be a collision, just came in deep, picked up the loose change. Well, the, it looked like the Panthers might have touched that puck on the dump in, but they ruled that did not happen, so the icing whistle sounds. We've had in our Hyundai what to look for in tonight's game. Obviously, the Blackhawks have lots of speed, and they want to exploit the Florida Panthers defenseman. Gudbrandson, Gudbrandson uh, Gilroy, Gudbranson, Gilroy, not a lot of speed back there. And then secondly, make safe plays on bad ice. The ice here, a lot of the players complaining this morning, a little bumpy. The puck's going to be bouncing quite a bit. Make sure you're not taking chances, especially in front of your own net. Just making that safe and easy play. Huberto lost it to Kruger, looking to counterattack, but uh, Bickle jumped the gun just a little bit too early, allowing us to uh, mention the officials tonight. We haven't brought them up yet. The uh, two referees is, uh, are that man, Kevin Pollock, along with Don Van Massenhoven, the linesman Brad Kovacic and Pierre Rassico. Yeah. Right now, good Branson. Nearly then did turn it over. Shaw shot handled by Thomas. Gave a rebound, but the Panthers on it. Then they failed to clear it. Gilroy has it again. And Gilroy finds Jonathan Huberto. And Huberto's rink wide is knocked loose by Letty. Yeah, these are two defensemen I think the Blackhawks can try to expo exploit. Gilroy, who came to the Florida Panthers on a trial basis, made the team at a training camp. With them Branson, a, a fine young player, but he's real big, and sometimes his legs get a little tied up. Turn one over there and uh, almost cost his team. I mentioned this Florida team, Mike Weaver, one of the stalwarts on the back end. The guy who gets the most minutes, of course, he used to pull down a lot of minutes with the Chicago Blackhawks, Brian Campbell, as we look at Kevin Deneen, his third year as head coach of these Florida Panthers. Well, this one jumped away from Gilbert, mentioning uh, Guys who came here on a tryout, they got two D-men playing tonight who came here on a tryout basis. Tom Gilbert was one of those. He was bought out in Minnesota at the end of last year. Here comes Oduya with a long shot to block. I said Oduya, sorry, that's Brandon Peary with it. He left it for Johnson. Makes his way in deep. Now Ben Smith is in the lineup again. Smith for Peary. It hopped away from him, and now the Panthers Gomez. Send the team who didn't get very far. But look at this Florida D. You know, we, they do have some 
real promising young players, but by and large, four of their six defensemen in the lineup tonight are guys that have been around for a while. I mentioned Campbell, he's 34 years old, and Gilroy's 29, Weaver's 35. They got guys that have been here, uh, have been around for quite a while in the NHL. Good pass, gets into the zone, Taze with a shot. It's deflected off a stick, out of play. And that rush generated by a Marion host a nice dish at the line. Yeah, and speed, too. Once you make the blue line, guys going to the net. And we saw that their first shift out on the ice. It was Marion Hosa drawing a little bit of attention. Brandon Saad was open that last time. Jonathan Taves, his shot just gets a little deflected. Up over the glass. So Taves, Hosa, Saad, as was the grouping the other night in what was the best 60-minute game the Blackhawks have played all year, that victory over Toronto. And, uh, I mean, here's how good it was. Talking to the uh, video coach, Matt Beecham, who keeps track of the scoring chances in every period and every game. The chances in that, here's a turnover to Kopetsky. He still doesn't have a point yet this year. Seabrook and Steve talked about the ice. That looked like an ice problem with that bouncing biscuit. And uh, Seabrook nearly had a big problem, but Kopetsky couldn't get rid of an attempt. Now Taze fights off a check, threw it to the near board. That's picked off. Matthias got it out. Just whenever you've got the puck and you're the last man back, you just have to make sure, even if the puck is bouncing, maybe you've got to just chip it to the boards and chase it down, but you can't serve up anything in the middle. Patrick Kane looking for somewhere to go. Dropped it back, Oduya, for Thomas and a one-timer. Kicked away Thomas. And the Panthers able to get it out. A good save by Thomas. That's his third, and Michael Hansen's is right in front of him. He gets low to track the puck. Leishman with a steal. Stand-up play by Jalmerson to the blue line. That's what I love about that oduya Jalmerson pair. They won't give you an inch. They really protect their blue line. They've got a close gap. They'll stand up and force you to make a play. Sharp gains the line, but stripped of it before he could pull the trigger. Fleischman the other way. Floats along, Rister in. Brookbank took some contact in the corner. And now Kane there to help out. Cleared it to center. Now Bickle racing for contact. It came from Winchester. Puck loose into the middle. Here's the shot. Good save by Copper with the right pad on Huberto. Held in good brands and got it to the corner. A shot from the boards went well wide by Gilroy, and it's out of the zone. Sheldon Brookbank trying to be aggressive there and got walked around. A great save by Corey Crawford. Turn over here to Shaw, but Ian Bickle could not complete a give and go. And Huberto able to hoist it. Long feed finding Shaw. Going to buy a little time. Good Branson gave him a rough ride. Here he chased it down. Here he sweeps it back. Oh, do you? A long flip shot never got through. And the Panthers right try to start back. Huberto put it deep. And out comes Oduya. The pass taken away. And it's cleared by Upshaw in behind. Gomez there. Left it for Boys. Back to Scott Gomez. His shot. Shoulder save by Crawford in traffic. Corey Carver's made two really good saves here in the first six and a half minutes. What should have been two easy exits have turned into many turnovers. Earlier, Oduya to Peary. Peary wasn't expecting it. Now a long clip shot by Saad. Block to Peary. Dropped it to Keith. A long glass. Thomas made the save. Rebound loose in the middle. They fight for it. And boys fail to get it out. Taves coming on the chain. Kept it in. Hit hard on the board by Weaver. Now they get together again in deep. And... Trying to pry it free. Finally, Smith did. Dropped it back to Keith across for Seabrook. Looking for a lane, nothing there, but he hangs on to it. Brandon Saad. Left it into the corner for Tay. Jonathan Tay's without a point in his last four games. Dropped it to Keith along left. The redirect went wide from Saad. Another good shift by that first line, dominating down deep inside the blue line of the Florida Panthers. 
By the way, I just thought I better finish a thought I started about five minutes ago. Talking about the last game and how good the Hawks were. The chance total in that game from uh, Matt Meats from the video coach, 16 to 4. Mm. Uh, the Blackhawks given up only four scoring chances the entire night to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, Toronto came in, and a lot of people were talking about them, the new look Leafs, and uh, Blackhawks made them look pretty ordinary. Look to start back. And Matthias is pass taken away. Oduya finds Hanzus three on three into the zone. Michael Hanzus spins in the corner. Drops it to Keith. The shot was blocked. And now Barkov. And this kid, Steven mentioned him earlier, just 19 years of age, and he is going to raise a lot of eyebrows with the early part of the season. He's uh, He's playing very well for this Panther team as a snap shot by Bickle deflected up off the glass. Bickle to the corner. Adeline Kulikov. Good puck support there from Fleischman. Out they come. Where Stieg wants Fleischman. Good back check by Krueger. And they try to carry it on, but uh, the Panthers rule to be offside. We played almost half the first period. Still scoreless in Florida. Head coach of the Florida Panthers, Kevin Deneen. You see in his third year behind the bench here in South Florida. Who is still a very good friend and was once a teammate of the guy standing behind the Chicago bench, Joe Quenville. He's got a lot of respect for Kevin Deneen, doesn't he, as a player? Yes. Oh, absolutely. He said he would go through a wall for you. And he said a lot more skill than people gave him credit for it. One of the reasons he lasted a very long time in the NHL, Kevin Deneen. Right, winds it to an open wing, held in good Branson. That shot, oh, that it was an awkward shot block by uh, Bolig. Seems to be still stunned on the play, but it continues on as a pass from Winchester didn't connect. Well, something came off his helmet. Maybe a piece broke. I, I, I certainly hope, hope it wasn't a couple of teeth, but there was a small object on the ice right after he got hit in the head. Now the upshot, the pass was behind him. Back come the Hawks. Saad dropped it for Hosa. Oh, and it's ruled to be offside. Kind of a double block by the Blackhawks. They had the winger going out to the point, and Bolig was in front of the net and catches the puck high. Watch 52. Yeah, that's obviously a piece of the helmet. It went skyward. The chunk came off, landed on the ice. He seems to be okay. I think he's got to get a new lid. But... Headers are okay in soccer, but it, I don't think they're very well, very much often recommended in this game. Gilbert moves it ahead. And here's Matthias Arister into the glove of Corey Crawford. All right, now we're at the midway point of period one. Still scoreless. Ted Teeter Kennedy scored for the Maple Leafs. He was 18 years, 27 days. That's our Kia drive to the net. A turnover to Kopetsky, moving to the net, shooting and a save by Crawford, who's able to not yield a loose puck. So Thomas Kopetsky, who does not have a point yet this year, has had a couple of pretty good uh, chances early on here for the Panthers. Yeah, you'll see the turnover by number two, and again, maybe the puck bouncing a little bit, but Kopetsky picks it up. Great patience there by Corey Crawford. So easy to cheat off that post, maybe anticipate a pass, but he stayed with the shot. As you mentioned, Pat, Kopetsky, a little snake bitten. And getting plenty of time on the number one line tonight and uh, has come up empty thus far. Well, Kevin and he was asked about him this morning and, and uh, no, talk a little bit about what we know in Chicago. Is what he brings to this club is his diversity and his ability to play multiple positions. It's not necessarily what shows up in the score sheet, what he brings to this team. He actually mentioned the word leadership that uh, they thought he was very helpful to uh, some of their younger guys. Here's Keith with a long shot, hitting traffic to Taves. Now Hosa, that'll elude him. Gilbert sandwiched in the corner. Hawks win the puck back. Keith for Taves. Looking to get it to Hosa. Pulling it back. And a shot. And a smothering save. 
the puck was loose, but the referee had lost sight of it. Thomas made a point blank save, never had it under control, but the referee was shielded by the body of Thomas, so that's why he lost sight. Yeah, Dan, Don Van Massenhoven, he can apologize. He, he kind of held his chest, give and go. Watch the play by 81 in front, though. Pulls it off his forehand with the backhand. Puck still loose. Van Massenhoven was blocked out. Post actually missed on that first attempt. That's something you'll see from Tim Thomas an awful lot. He's a scrambler. He'll get down, and he never quits on a shot. The Panthers handle one hands it up the boards. It bounced loose, and Fleischman had a lot of traffic right in front of him. Here's Oduya. That pass tipped in. Florida reorganizing. Boy, that ice, you mentioned earlier, Steve, it looks like the ice is terrible. I mean, guys who are normally very sure with the puck having trouble here in the first period. Especially when you have to make quick decisions. Jalmerson walks into the long shot. Oh, a good save and a knuckle. That puck was on edge when Jalmerson let it go. Thomas made the stop. Back they come. And Rush was jammed up. I'm not sure what happened to Barkoff. He seemed to stop skating. And it looked like a good-looking rush. Had nothing happening for Florida. Yeah, he, he tried to drop pass. Nobody was there. He was guessing instead of, you know, making sure the guy was coming behind him. Good. Branson rings it around. Gilroy checked in the corner. Hawks tried to dig it out, but it jumped away from Kruger. A four-man battle finally won by the Panthers. They're able to clear it. Letty put it in. Now a long shot, Brooks Bank tip. Oh, and that, after a redirect, it hit a Florida D man. Comes back to the line for Letty. A long whack, never got past Good Branson. And Gomez got it out. Bad boys could not get away from Brooks Bank. Now, boys with a steal. Centered one, a shot went wide, partially blocked by Brooks Bank. Held in by Gilbert. Here's a long attempt. Blockered away by Crawford. Now the Panthers have a good shift going. But the Buttes had had it knocked off his stick and out. You know, the only good chances that Florida's had are direct turnovers by the Blackhawks. Then again, a reverse by the Blackhawks ended up on the stick of the Panthers. <laughs> Jesse Winchester helped by Buttes to have it hopped away from him and Hawks clear it out of there. Good pressure and a steal by Bowling with a shot. Kicked away Thomas. Rebound to the Panthers and now Seabrook is at center. Gilbert put it up to boards. Huberto. It's clear to Marcel Gott in for Kopetsky. Around Seabrook getting to the middle. A good recovery by Taves with some back pressure. And Kopetsky has been as dangerous as anybody on the Florida team in the first period. Oh, he's looked good. He's looked really good. And Brent Seabrook not very often gets beat one on one, but Kopetsky turned him inside out. And as you mentioned, great back pressure there from the captain Taves. They stopped another good scoring opportunity for number 82. Picked off Keith, and back come the Hawks. Taves getting in. Oh, he tried a sweet pass attempt, but it never all down all the way through to Saad. And back come the Panthers. Barkov gets it in. A pass was right there for Versteeg and jumped away from it. Another indication of ice that doesn't appear to be very good at all. Yeah, and, and then that last pass just jumped away from him. Also, it was behind him a little bit. He had to stop, but still just exploded off his stick. Leishman for Barkov. He drives in, looks to settle. He tipped out of midair, but wide by Versteeg. A tough chance of the puck off the ice, but Versteeg still had a redirect. He's got in the corner, trying to slip it in front. Picked off by Oduya. Now they work in the corner, and it squirts loose. The backhander went wide, Versteeg. Jalmerson able to find Kane. Patrick Kane sends Oduya up the ice. He's got a little space into the zone. Oduya dropped it to Sharp. A backhander. Uh, Save partially made by Thomas. 
Leishman's long pass attempt was tipped, resulting in an offside whistle. Well, the Florida Panthers have had six shots so far in the opening period. Nothing has gone in. A very close call didn't hit the net from Versteeg. And from our Xfinity Telestrator, watch the feet of Brent Seabrook as he turns to the outside. Kopetsky will realize it comes to the inside and as this run. As soon as Kopetsky sees him turn, he brings it inside. Good back pressure. Good help, too, from his partner, Duncan Keith, helps stop that. We talked about bad ice, puck up on edge. That's one advantage. Always shoot the puck when it's up on edge, bouncing a little bit on net. You might get a little bit of a funny hop. You might get it to dip, as it did there for Jalmerson. Good save by Thomas. Brookbank has to scurry back. Robert Brookbank has been uh, in the Hawks lineup every other game in the last six or so. Is that uh, puck to flex out of play. Now, we mentioned earlier that uh, Joel Quenville at one point uh, during his playing days was a teammate of the Florida coach Kevin Deneen. And kind of interesting this morning that Deneen was very complimentary to Joel. And somebody asked him about uh, how Quenville was as a player. And he said, well, Joel was a very cerebral defenseman. So when that quote was repeated to Joe Quenville, he said, let me tell you what he meant by that. I was slow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he knew how to play his angles. I remember asking Joel once about Kevin and he said once in a playoff game, he turned Larry Robinson, the Hockey Hall of Famer, inside out of the Montreal Canadiens, scored a highlight real goal. And Kevin and was tough, but he had some speed and pretty good hands. All right, now shouts, uh, mishandle at the blue line. The transit hit hard by Shaw, who leads the Blackhawks in hits in the early stages of the year. Bickle lines it in deep. Shaw there, and Huberto got a good piece of him. Then drops back to Brookbank, whose shot never got to the net. Huberto, the reigning Calder Trophy winner, his rookie of the year last season. At 31 points in the lockout short year, 14 goals. Florida's doing a real good job of blocking shots. You know, Chicago's probably carried most of the play down in their zone, but not a lot getting through. And uh, that last time, it was Winchester just getting a stick in front of him, broke his stick. There was two bodies in that shooting lane. Is uh, flipped in by Matthias. Seabrook up the boards for Hosa. Nice pass to Keith. He'll move it. Oh, he tried to get it to side, but it was a tweener right between his skates and his stick. Hawks first on it, though, to save icing. Taves got there. Now it's taken by Keith to Hosa. The one timer is stopped. And the rebound into the corner. Taves for Hosa again, bouncing puck. He hacked at it. Thomas made the save. It's Kulikov trying to cover it. Still loose. No whistle. Big scramble. Look at there's nine. They still hack away. Hosa couldn't get rid of an attempt. That was checked. Came free to Seabrook. Across to Keith. Here it he comes. He wanted to redirect. Got it from Hosa, but it went wide. And it's still loose. Here's side work on the wall. And a penalty coming up. Boy, this number one line for the Blackhawks just dominating every time they're on the ice. Florida lucky there wasn't a penalty shot called in this play. Kulikov had tried to cover it in the crease. This is to the end, the tail end of that play. The redirection, Blackhawks stay with it. And there's Kulikov with the hook on Brandon Saad. Here's the barrage. Now Kulikov, if he covers it there in the blue paint, that's a penalty shot. You're not allowed to cover the puck, freeze the puck if you're not a goalie in the blue paint. I guess the referee felt it was still a live puck. They dig it loose, they draw a penalty, and they get the first power play on the night. Hawks power play, two goals the last five games. That's two out of 19. And here's a turnover. Winchester, though, impeded by Sharp, who had problems with, again, a bouncing puck. And this is where bad ice hurts the most on the power play. You get skilled players out there. You depend on your passing, and that puck's rolling. It just throws everything off. Hayes bounced it loose. A battle of the boards, and you know, the Panthers able to get to it, but Upshaw unable to get it past Sharp. Shaw to the corner, finds it around the key. Now 
Now to this side, Upshaw. Couldn't get it out. Kane took it away to Sharp. A long blast. Hip. Oh, a nice redirect from Shaw, but it deflected off the mark. Now Keith tries a long one. And that blocked out in front. Gotch, then able to get rid of it. I mentioned it earlier. Florida doing a real good job getting in the shooting lanes. And it's not just the first guy. They've got layers. If it's getting by no, uh, guy number one, it's hitting the guy in behind. Panthers have given up a power play goal against that puck deflecting out of play. They've yielded a power play goal against three straight games. Three of their, not, three of their last ten have been converted against Florida. Yeah, they finished last in the NHL last year, 30th out of 30 teams in the penalty kill. They've been getting a little better, and yes, they did give up a power play goal last game, but they did kill two separate five-on-threes that lasted almost two minutes, about a minute for each one. And that was a turning point in the game. That was against the Minnesota Wild, and Minnesota, a top-ranked power play. They did a real good job shutting them down. Freeburg's pass was read nicely by Kopeski. We get to the final minute of the first period. And one more power play rush here for Chicago. Side to Seabrook. More side in the corner. Weaker there to meet him. And dug out of there by Winchester. Made a nice play. Jesse Winchester, another one of these guys, came to camp without a contract on a trial basis, and he's been one of their better, better penalty killers this year. Florida's penalty over. Both teams full strength. Campbell checked in the corner. Now picked up by Versteeg, who's able to clear it out of there. Seven remaining as it's dumped into the Chicago end. Barkov checked by Jalmerson, jumped loose in front, but the horn has gone, and the first period is in the books. The Blackhawks credited with 12 shots on goal in the opening 20. The Panthers notched only six shots. Most of their better scoring chances were the result of Blackhawks' defensive zone miscues. The ice seems to be like peanut brittle so far tonight. Welcome back to South Florida. The teams are scoreless through 20 minutes of play, even though the Blackhawks had a pretty good edge in territorial action in that opening period. And uh, let's go back to the late 80s. And we talked about this a little bit before, but uh, how about this picture of the 87-88 Hartford Whalers and the number of front office personnel in this picture? Start upper right. That's Norm McIver. Right Played there. defense for that team who was uh, now, of course, assistant general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks. Go lower left. That's Ronnie Francis, the captain of that team at Hartford, a uh, Hockey Hall of Famer, now the assistant general manager in uh, Carolina. Now go to the middle row. How about that handsome fellow wearing the A, second from the left? That's Joel Quenville, of course, the coach of the Blackhawks. Next to him is Johnny Anderson, the former coach of the Atlanta Thrashers, now, of course, the uh, head manning the Chicago Wolves. Next to him is Kevin Deneen, who's the head coach here in Florida. And next to him is Dave Tippett, who's the head coach in Phoenix. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All of that? And of course, I look at the, the uh, guy in the middle, the cat, Emo Francis. What yeah. a wonderful gentleman uh, he's always been. And uh, that is quite a cast of characters and quite an impressive list of NHL management personnel. Boy, we didn't even get on the top row. Donnie Maloney, head coach for the Phoenix Coyotes. He was in there. Ulf Samuelson was right to the right of uh, Coach Joel Quenville. So I, I don't know if that team was any good, but they must have been smart. <laughs> uh, yeah, they didn't do a lot of damage in the playoffs. That being said, remember the big trade, obviously, just shortly after that, Ronnie Francis and Ulf Samuels and the Pittsburgh Penguins, and uh, that really turned the fortunes of the Penguins. They went on to win a couple Stanley Cups after that. Well, the Blackhawks outshot the Panthers 12-6 in the first period, and the uh, team made the point about the Panthers' willingness to block shots. They had 14 blocks, so that's that more than two dozen Blackhawk uh, shots fired at the net. 
Here's Taves, and as we get the second period underway, driving around and check to the goal, and just the puck eluded him as Thomas came out with a poke check. Oh, and I thought Thomas was going to get a penalty. Florida's got the puck. The referee still has his hand up. It's going to be a Chicago penalty. And I think it's making contact with the goalie. And we'll have to look at this because it really looks like Thomas comes out and, and actually sticks his arm into the captain. Good power move to the outside of Gilbert. Yeah, absolutely moves into Jonathan Taves, takes away his, his ice. Yeah, he's skating through the blue paint. But he's certainly moving in that direction. Regardless, Jonathan Taves gets the goaltender interference penalty. And the Florida Panthers will go to the power play. And this second period of Blackhawk hockey is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. After a dreadful start, penalty killing for the Blackhawks, their first three games have been really good ever since. Two of the last 17 are all they have yielded. That's over the last five games. So you can see Hans is hot with Kruger to open up the PK. The Florida power play is at a hard time. And... Uh, one out of their last nine over three games for the PP unit of the Panthers. They win a draw though. Campbell to Kulikov. Fleischman with a wrist shot in and out of the glove of Crawford. Kopetsky put it between teammates. That's a good save by Corey Crawford. Kopetsky, as often does, just parks himself in front. He'll take a beating, but he was trying to screen Corey Crawford. Crawford didn't get it cleanly, but made the stop. A near takeaway by Saad. Then he did get it. Hosa, and they'll play a little keep away. Brandon Saad normally does get some penalty killing time, normally towards the tail end of the penalty. With Joachim Nordstrom going down to Rockford, he's going to get a little... More looks, especially on the front end of penalty kills. And Taves in the box, who usually would be out there with Hosa as he as Saad was on the last shift. All right, now Gilroy across Campbell with a long pass. A tough too hot to handle for their leading scorer, Fleischman, who's got it in the corner. Fleischman's got eight points, best on the floor to team. This pass didn't work out, though, and the Hawks able to clear it. Good strong play by Hanzoos. Versteeg calling for a penalty, but Versteeg had the puck. You can hit the guy, and that's exactly what Hanzoos did. Scott Gomez. Here to the first Steve. He lost it back to center. Now it's bouncing to Gilroy at the line. Knocked away by Saad, but Moses passes a little bit behind him. And the Panthers regroup. One last power play rush here for the home team. First Steve into the zone. Lost it. It's a tough shift for Christopher Steve. Three turnovers, two just right at the blue line. Remember, he missed a good chunk of last year. Played the first 10 games and then blew out his ACL and was out for the remainder of uh, last season for the Panthers. And to his credit, he's actually back in their lineup earlier than they thought. That injury is a seven to nine month injury, so he's available to play and out there, but uh, Certainly not with his normal wheels. Here's a bouncing shot that deflects wide of the net. Came leaves in front. Oduya, good stick, knocked away from the thighs. And Oduya settles it down for Kane, but missed out of his reach. A good stick twice by Johnny Oduya. And not an overly physical defenseman, but he strips pucks, and that's doing your job. Both teams back at full strength, and Hayes couldn't hold up as Kane carried it in there. And just as a reminder, all Blackhawk home games for the 2013-2014 season will begin no later than 7 p.m. Visit ChicagoBlackhawks.com for ticket information. Next chance for you to see the Hawks at home will be Saturday night. When the Minnesota Wild come in, 7 o'clock puck drop. Branson getting back for Florida. Huberdeau, oh, nice play. Able to shield it on the boards and get the puck out. Oh! Now Shaw takes it back for the Blackhawks. Seabrook will crank it deep. 
In the interview with Jonathan Tate, he talked about the success they had going back to the points. The defensive for the Blackhawks had five shots in that first period. Five of 12 is a pretty good percentage coming from the back end. Osa able to shield the nicely then. Finally ran into a check and good Branson. Well, this pass nearly broken up. Now a steal. Huberto gonna buy a little time as they're changing, but this pass read by Jomerson. And now picked up two on one. Taze for Saab driving it up. Look back to Taze. Campbell broke it up. It deflected back to the line, held in Oduya to Brookbank along with, missed the target, and it bounced all the way out. Good defense by the former Blackhawk, Brian Campbell. Used his skate to block that pass earlier, though. It was Marion Hosa lifting a stick to spring the two-on-one. It was Taves inside. Now Taves gets the line to Kane, walks in, shooting at us. Thomas nearly gave a loose buck, and then Taves was taken to the end boards. He was interfered with, and Kulikov's going to be Sent to the box. Yeah, Patrick Kane getting a chance from in close. Tries to go high on Tim Thomas. He gets a piece of it quick Number to cover. Seven, four, two, three, and from your three, Captain three. Morgan Robocam, here's the two on one. Hosa just had lifted a stick. The two on one side tries to thread this pass through the skates. Good job by number 51 Campbell to turn that blade sideways, get it a little wider, and block the pass. Goes Kulikov in the penalty box. I was talking with uh, assistant coach Mike Kitchen this morning. He used to be a coach here in Florida. Only two guys left from that team. Kulikov, the guy in the box, and Sean Mathias, the other. The Hawks with their second power play chance, and Peary, Kane, and... Smith or a Bickle open it up. Here's a long shot going wide to Kane. Patrick Kane. Plays a little catch with Duncan Keith who fired along a good right pad from Thomas. Rebound to the Panthers and they're able to clear. What an opportunity for Brandon Peary. He's getting off the ice right now. He scored a power play goal last game. He said it was the first time he was on the ice for a power play with the Blackhawks. Of course, he was in that position down in Rockford an awful lot. Kane up the middle. Unable to get rid of an attempt. Goes across to Keith, looking to center tip. Score! Nice pass from Duncan Keith. He found the blade of Jonathan Taves, and the captain has given the Hawks the lead. And the Blackhawks power play spreading the penalty killers out, and a good heads-up play by Duncan Keith. Jonathan talked about that in that first period intermission, getting shots from the point. It's a shot pass. And you see that pass through the box opens things up. Jonathan Taves being checked. That's good. Branson, who's six feet, five inches tall, but he's not going to deny the cap. And a nice redirection on the backhand. Not the easiest of shots, but a great redirection. And it gives the Blackhawks that all-important first goal. I also like what he told you, Jonathan, I mean, about the uh, mother's trip. He said, judging, with some of the, judging some of the guys we have in that locker room, I think we have some saints on this trip. <laughs> it was really cool. Everywhere you look, there are smiles with the, the entire group. Here's a centering pass broken up. And the Panthers trying to start back. Feed ahead, jumped away from Boys. Picked up by Letty. Now Brookbank. Able to reach that one and Panthers keep it in. A long shot Gilbert off the skate of Letty. And Shaw the other way. Andrew Shaw had a wrist shot deflecting into the corner. And then dug loose by Tom Gilbert. And Gomez ahead. Then up Shaw back for Gomez. He tapped it forward. Chance boys. Oh, one pass too many. Brad Boyd. Could have had a point blank chance. Tried to make a feed. And it didn't work out. Well, when you only get six shots in the first period, don't give up the scoring Two opportunity. Two on one, the other way, flights for their leading score. Nice play defensively by Brookbank, who sprawled down. Now a long shot attempt, never got through. And it bounces in behind Fleischman there, trying to center. That deflected by Letty. Then came back to the line. Campbell. 
Ends it ahead, Fleischman moving to the middle. And a shot from that angle. Crawford got to the far post, and Fleischman would get that through the traffic. Campbell kept it in. Good sequence here for the Panthers. The center pass, Fleischman, who fired a roller up off the glass. Held in Campbell. Looks in deep for Versteeg. The Fleischman, the Kulikov. He missed the target with a long one. And the Hawks need to clear their zone, and finally are able to do that. Yeah, they're dead tired. They might not be able to get a full change here because being the second period, the box an awful long way away. Weissman gets back in. Good stand-up play. Letty. Versteeg, though, able to find Campbell the drive. He missed the net. Going for the glove side. Rebound back to the Panthers. Here's Weaver putting it across. A centering attempt. Gilbert comes all the way through. Versteeg's been out there forever. He's got it again. So Fleischman had it forever. He's got it now. Fleischman couldn't get it through. Letty. Now a centering pass deflected. The shot deflected up high. Versteeg again. Weaver. Out of the Fleischman. Out to the cross. Here's a long shot. A sprawling block by Ben Smith. The puck up the boards. Held in. And then a mishandle by the kid. Barkoff. The race is on. Smith gets into the zone. Shooting goal post. Rebound. Hit the team back and hit Thomas on the backside, but didn't bounce in. And what a shot by Ben Smith. A huge block. And then a rings one off the post. Both Letty and Brookbank dead tired. They finally were able to get off. Patrick Kane has a little room. Speeds into the zone. Kane set it sharp, and he fired a one-timer wide off his heel. What a perfect pass. In stride, backhand into the wheelhouse of Patrick Sharp. And an offside play back at the Blackhawks line. Well, the Chicago captain did not have a point in the last four games. He scores the opener here tonight from Keith and Kane, who broke a three-game point in this drop. And tonight's Geico quote comes from head coach Joel Quenville about Joachim Nordstrom and Ben Smith. Regarding Nordstrom being sent down, Q said, and I quote, this gets him more quality ice time, more rotation, some penalty kill. Hopefully he can get that and keep it going. And regarding Smith, he said, and I quote, Ben has played pretty well in the games he's played, getting more guys playing. That's the idea. We'll see how it works out. The Hawks have... Uh... 12 forwards left on their roster at the moment, and 8-D for two extra defensemen. Rosenthal and DaCosta are the healthy scratches this evening. Veteran Mike Weaver for the Panthers sends it across. Gilbert didn't connect on a pass attempt. Taken now by Keith. Plus three in the last five games for Duncan Keith. This long pass, though, deflects away from Hossa and out. Joel Quenwell was talking about Ben Smith and what he brings to the table. Great block shot towards the end of a long shift, and he turns it into a scoring opportunity. He cleanly beats Tim Thomas. Unfortunately for Ben Smith, rings off the iron. Well, Smith, uh, see what he's done tonight. He's not been in the line the last two games, but prior to that, he had a goal and an assist in the previous three, and... We just showed you came within an inch or two of adding to those numbers. Here's a penalty coming up. Will it be a penalty shot? Maybe the center pass here picked off. And it is a penalty shot. The kid, Huberdo, is going to be given a one-on-one -on -one by Don Van Massenhoven. Well, Huberdo's a slippery player. We talked about him in the open. He's had a few chances like this in this game. And deceptive speed. Foul from behind, penalty shot. Gets tripped down. Right there by Michael Hounsus, who, as a centerman, not normally the last guy back there, but he was. Dove, if he makes contact with a puck, it's okay, but he tripped Huberto. He gets the penalty shot. He's got three goals this year. He had 14 last year in the shortened season. He's in alone on the penalty shot against Crawford. Stick handling beautifully. Crawford with the right pad. Big save by Corey Crawford after... A scintillating rush by Jonathan Huberto. Made about six moves right on the doorstep, and this is patience by the goaltender. He actually committed on that first move, but he was able to readjust. Watch it right there. Goes down, flinches, and can still get back. I mean, that, that's great reaction, being able to get back to where you want to be, not over committing. And that's exactly what Corey Crawford did. A big stop on Huberto. 
Keeps his team in front. The Panthers get the draw. One, one timer, a broken stick for Campbell as he tried to let it go. Cougar needs some help. And Oduya finds Jalmerson. Back comes Fleischman dumping it in. Now the Hawks start away. Shaw chipped it deep. Bickle. Helped by Shaw in the corner. Bouncing puck near the blue paint, but good Branson there. And now the Panthers come away. Markov will send it in for a change. And the Hawks able to clear the zone. And back goes Keith. Here's Seabrook. And a puck cleared out to Bickle. Bickle threw it to the other corner. Gilbert first there, and it's around the board. Keith trying to keep it in. And it winds up back at center with Brookbank. A pretty good pushback this period by the Florida Panthers. A turnover to Boys, a backhand shot. And it fluttered wide. Good recovery by Brookbank. Think he got a piece of that with his stick. Boys' his pass here comes to Gilbert. Tom Gilbert finds Mike Weaver back for Gilbert. Now in behind Boyd. Missed it. Picked up by Keith. Long pass. Peary chasing after. And in Peary. Dropped it back to Nick Letty. Here it comes. Hit some traffic out in front. Gilbert made the block. Letty again. A wrister. Tip. Good save on a then by Bowling, Thomas made the save. The, puck, the whistle had gone. I think the puck wound up in the net, but not till after the play had been stopped. And Brandon Bowling right where he is supposed to be in the Chicago offense, right near the blue paint, creating havoc. Well, the Blackhawks have struck to grab the lead and nearly added another just then. Welcome back to South Florida. There's a look at some happy humans. A couple of boxes full of... Blackhawks moms on hand here in the BB&T Center. You see all those great looking jerseys and I, I, the cool thing in the last day and a half since the Hawks left Chicago, not only the picture you just saw, but the picture of these guys. Now there's a game going on, but when you see them away from the, the rink, everybody's smiling yeah. all the time. I mean, they're just having a ball. So it's really been uh, cool to be around the entire group and a wonderful thing for the Blackhawks to do and there have not there have been a bunch of NHL teams that have done fatherships very few if any have any ever done motherships this is actually the second time the Hawks have done it they've uh, alternated between dads and moms the last couple of times they've brought parents on the road so really neat experiences for one and all and a wonderful thank you from the Blackhawks to the folks who brought all these athletes up and all the extra time and effort that they put in and those 6 a.m. ice times a long one there from Gotch is snared rather easily by Crawford you know you talked about the 6 a.m. ice times Duncan Keith who's just changing right now he's telling me a story he said his mom's a nurse she'd work an awful lot she would get up he'd have on Saturday morning 5 a.m. practice he would she would take him to the rink 4.30, quarter to 5, watch for half an hour, and then head to work. And then Duncan Keith would get a ride home from one of his teammates. But he said that's the kind of commitment she made when I was a youngster. And as you mentioned, they're just so happy to, to kind of not really pay it back, but to show them you know, how they get treated on the road. And uh, they're having a lot of fun with their moms. Oduy under pressure, and now they're going to be able to steal. Fleischman put it across Kulikov. Nice play by Jalmerson. Right in the shooting lane, Kul Kulikov unable to make anything happen. Will Jalmerson get right into the proper area? And Kulikov tried to change his angle, too, and Jalmerson wouldn't fall for it. He just stayed between the net and the stick. Campbell's backhand pass picked up now for Stieg. Chris for Stieg. Left in the corner. Kulikov no! rings it around for Stieg. 
Wrapped it to Campbell. His rink wide picked off Kulikov. Centered it. Fleischman centered it. Now a shot. Oh, and Crawford never saw that, but it went high and wide and then came back to the blue paint where Crawford managed to locate. You're absolutely right, Pat. You can almost tell or read his body language. Crawford turned his gloves up as this puck was coming over the net. Good passing by the Panthers. And the shot from the high slot. It missed by quite a bit, but Barkoff and Michael Hansus providing the screen. And then Barkoff just couldn't quite pick up that rebound. You see his numbers of late, 3 and one and a sparkling 946 save percentage in those four games. Yeah, that was six goals against and 111 shots over that stretch. And past the halfway point of this one, the Panthers had 11 shots. Dogs have had 17. And now the Panthers look to move from their own end. Brad Boys pushed it forward. Brooke Bank is checked. By Bugstad in the corner. Nick Bugstad now tried to center Huberto, dropped it back. Here's a long shot. Oh, good save by Crawford off a rip from Good Branson. And with Bugstad in the neighborhood, no loose puck. Yeah, he absorbed that very well. So easy to come off your blocker, your arm. He catches that with his right arm and then holds it against his body. Bugstad, a pretty big body at 6'6. There it is. He uses that trapper to hold it up against his body, making sure nothing's there. And you see, that was boys. My mistake, boys on the doorstep. But uh, Nick Bukestad, who they have high hopes for, is a first rounder a couple of years ago and uh, missed most of training camp with a concussion problem. But uh, highly decorated back in the state of hockey at Minnesota, he was Mr. Hockey there in his, the tail end of his high school years. Then. Played three years for the University of Minnesota. As the Panthers win a draw, Fleischman, this has been their best line out there now. Fleischman to Campbell, dropped it across Kulikov, a long flip shot block. Seabrook, he made a good pass to Smith. And Smith's rink wide on the money for bowling, and he couldn't hold it cleanly, and that results in an offside play. We mentioned this at the start that. A little bit of a quirky schedule for the Blackhawks early on. In fact, 10 of their first 12 games are going to be against the Eastern Conference, and that shapes up as good news. Look what the West has done against the East. They have been absolutely dominant. There are only three teams, in fact, in the Western Conference that are under 500. There's a bunch of teams in the East that are below the break-even point in the early stages of the season. Here's Saad out of the corner. Oh, good stick, Weaver. And they continue to battle. Taves won the puck. Donovan Taves bounced it to Duncan Keith across to Seabrook. Now Seabrook moves in, takes a look with a shot, and a save by Thomas. Well, he's given a lot of rebounds, Tim Thomas, but so far hasn't been hurt by it. Back come the Panthers. Matthias in on Keith. And Kopetsky rings it back towards Matthias, who couldn't pick up the bouncer. Got his shot, hit his own man. Campbell took a whack. That is blocked by Seabrook. He, from his knees, able to clear the zone. Yeah, that's a good play. Getting down to make sure you block it. And indeed, the play from your knees. You know, very easy to, to whip on the puck, have your heel on the ice and the toe up in the air. But they did a good job getting out to the blue line. Kane passes it to himself right around Upshaw, gets into the zone, and a good recovery by the Panthers' D, held in by Hansus. Now the Panthers able to get it back. Upshaw up the ice. Here it is. Here's a big shot going wide from Winchester, and Kane to the other end. And into his own man, Hansus. Winchester put it ahead. Now chase to the corner. Here's a long shot by Upshaw off the mark. Held in good Branson, put it in behind. Gomez. Looking away at Brookbank. 
Now picked up by Huberto. Nice recovery by Sheldon Brookbank to steal a pass attempt. Here's a long one-timer. Block it away by Crawford. Boy, to Gomez who put it around the board. Third great defensive play by Sheldon Brookbank right in front of his own net. Blackhawks are tired out there. Huberto. Now left it for Bukestad. Trying to center Gilroy. Big save by Crawford. That's as good a chance as the Panthers, the Panthers have had tonight. And Corey Crawford, a solid point blank stop on Matt Gilroy, who had him one on one, but the Hawks are still in front. Time now for our GMC professional grade saves. One on one, the penalty shot by Huberto, stopped by Corey Crawford. Huberto had been two for two going into this one. And then just before that last break, an excellent scoring opportunity out front, not only with the stop, Corey Crawford, but quick to cover. I mentioned Huberto, two for two. Now Corey Crawford and penalty shot, six for six. He's perfect. And now the Panthers, Fleischman. Goes Barkoff, but Jalmerson right in his way, and that puck's out of play. Mention this has been the uh, as good a line as the Panthers have had tonight. Barkoff, the kid, just 19 years old, between Versteeg and Fleischman, and a couple of shifts where they have dominated zone time and have created some pretty good opportunities. Matched up here against the line of Kruger, Shaw, and Bickle. Dark stuff, uh, Barkov, maybe that comes from good stock. Uh, and he's born in Finland, but his dad played for Team Russia and the hockey team, and his mom played for Team Russia basketball. So, uh, both uh, very athletic, athletic genes in the family, and we mentioned earlier, second overall. And there was some concern for Barkov because he tore up his shoulder playing in Finland, the Finnish Elite League. Of course, he's playing with guys who are a lot older, 20, 30, 35 years old and uh, had that major surgery has come back he says it's stronger than ever and he's really fit into this team he's at three goals three assists in his first nine NHL games not bad for an 18 year old trying to well, he's 19 now but he's trying to find his way around this league but he's, uh, his plays were very impressive in the first couple of weeks to virtually everybody who's watched Florida here in the early uh, part of the year. And the Panthers are able to dump it in. That was a nice play to Shaw. Bickle kicks to the stick and steps in. Ryan Bickle's shot is blocked. Came back to him, tries to get his goal. Ryan Bickle got a fortunate bounce. His first shot was blocked, but came right back to his blade. And he snapped it by the glove of Thomas. 2-0. Boy, did you see the net pull on that pad? That had some velocity behind it. And as you mentioned, he never quit on the first shot. He wasn't going to be a spectator. wasn't going to admire it. Well, he couldn't because he got blocked. But he just stayed with it, jumped on the loose puck. Nice puck movement, and you mentioned it too. Jalmerson up the middle to Shaw. First shot, a failed attempt. The second one absolutely lasers it past Tim Thomas. A huge goal for the Blackhawks. It had been a lot of Florida Panthers down in the Blackhawks zone. They needed that for relief. They've got a two-goal lead. able to double the lead and Smith able to clear it to center. Peary into the zone. Yes, did not connect with Bolig, but he got to it. Smith put it in front, never quite reaching Peary. And the Panthers will fire it the other way for an icing violation. Well, Pat, you mentioned you mentioned that pass by Nicholas Jones. The Blackhawks do this a lot. They pass it up the middle. You don't expect it. Crawford to Jalmerson. Watch. But he's in some trouble there. That's yeah. a heck of a play. Absolutely. And it was almost behind the back. I've seen Johnny O'Dea pass it through his legs to a guy in the middle. Not something you'd recommend to your defenseman. The Blackhawks, oh, they've got a lot of trust in their center. 
Saad sent it, just missing Hosa. Picked up Seabrook, a shot tip. And uh, then Thomas was in the way. Now in behind Tade. He was checked. Hawks get it back. Hosa, he wanted Keith, couldn't get a lane. And it's finally picked up by Huberto. Tave, though, took it away. Hard! Jonathan Tave looking to slip it in front. Boys steals and cleared the zone. Three separate takeaways by all three forwards on that line. The Blackhawks lead the NHL in takeaways. First it was Hosa, then it was Taves, and then Sai. Weaver's pass picked off. Sh uh, Sharp got it to Kane. Down low for Tay. He looks to Sharp in the corner. Oh, do ya? A long wrist shot. Stopped by Thomas. Fleischman the carom. Sends it out. Now Patrick Sharp. Drops it back. Jalmerson's long blast. Soaked up by Thomas. Well, tomorrow night, two of the NBA's most dynamic young stars go head-to-head -head as the Bulls travel to Wichita, Kansas for a preseason battle with Kevin Durant in Oklahoma City. Watch it live right here. Bulls, Thunder, tomorrow night at 8.30, only on Comcast Sportsnet. The Blackhawks have gained a lot of momentum from that Brian Bickle goal. His second in as many games had gone scoreless his first seven. Now has two in his last two games. Andrews down low. Now Kane looking for help to Oduya. Andrews in behind. Taken away by Upshaw. And the Panthers come away. Campbell carries and brings it around. Into the final minute now of period two. Everybody hacking and whacking in behind. Finally, Hanzus came away with it. And then Kane was hit hard. The Hawks blue line, but carried on to Sharp, whose shot was smothered by Campbell. Good to see the whole Blackhawks bench stood up to see who it was hitting Kane. They realized it was a good hit. Crawford's going to take a whistle here with... Half a minute remaining. And from your BMO Harris Bank check replay, huge hit by the Florida Panthers. Not very often that number 88 Patrick Kane gets knocked down. That's Jesse Winchester. Actually left his feet a little bit. See the Blackhawks bench standing up. Some of those guys getting ready for a change, but Kaner gets laid out right at the blue line. Rico missed it, and the Panthers hold it in, but a shot misses. And bounce back to center where Barkoff put it in. Versteeg looks to center. Good stick there from Keith. And the Blackhawks have been really good this period. Breaking up plays with a Sheldon Brookbank there, Duncan Keith. Gilbert Long one is up off the glass, and that's going to finish period two. A period in which the Panthers had eight shots. The Blackhawks had 10. And through 40 minutes, it's 22 Chicago shots, 14 Florida shots. And all the scoring came in the second. Keith set up Taze for a neat redirect on a power play. That was followed up by Brian Bickle following up his initial attempt to make it too long. Black Hawks hockey on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Do you believe in the power of possibility? The Illinois Lottery. Anything's possible. And by Toyota. Elevate your style with the 2014 Toyota Corolla. Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back to South Florida. You see the Hawks will take a two-goal lead into the third. We get to talk to assistant coach Jamie Compon. The mothership is a real special time, Jamie. 
it, certainly some distractions, but what about the first 40 minutes? You're coming off maybe your best 60 minutes of the year, the last game. What about these first two periods? Well, the first period, I thought we uh, we played a, a solid first period. The second period, we got away from our game. You know, they, they've got a lot of speed, and they want to play that up-tempo game, and they want to get into a track meet, and we allowed it to get into a track meet. Too many turnovers in the neutral zone. They came back and stuffed the puck down our throats for a bit. Jamie, Sheldon Brookbank, not an everyday player, but he made some nice th uh, stops there as far as two-on-ones right in front of the net. Just talk about him. You would have seen him when he was in Anaheim and you were in L.A. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a veteran player. He, he knows how to play the position. He's, uh, you know, like you said, he hasn't played many games, but he's a gamer. Every time he's in, he, he contributes, uh, whether defensively, offensively, moving the puck, uh, you know, and and he's loved by his teammates. He is, a, he is a great teammate, no doubt about it. All right, make the moms happy, will you? Okay, sounds good, guys. Thanks. <laughs> right, thanks, Jamie. So goals from Taves and Bickle in the second period have the Hawks in pretty good shape here as we start the third. And this third period of Blackhawks hockey is brought to you by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Honda dealers. Taves work in the corner. Jumped away from Hosa. Taken back by Saad. Dropped it out to Seabrook with a long blast. Good sliding shot block by Mathias. inside he will maintain control while being checked now he gets it into the zone His pass picked off by Gotch Versteeg the other way this Versteeg tried a snap shot that hit Jalmerson and went up out of play one goal two is the inside story of the 2013 Stanley Cup champion Blackhawks the hardcover book includes behind the scene photos of the locker room celebration after game six the plane ride to Chicago and much much more each book includes Blackhawks TV's championship DVD 17 seconds one goal two will be available at all Blackhawks store locations in November and can be pre-ordered at chicagoblackhawks.com Here's a chance for Steig, top angle, and the door shot by Crawford. Oh, do you? Missed sharp with a pass. The Panthers keep it in flight, but a drive. Oh, he's their best uh, point producer early on and missed the net. Here's Kane winning a battle, cuts in two on one shooting. Good save, Thomas. Rebound back to the corner. Picked up by Kulikov, put it up the boards, and now Barkov got it out of there. Thomas, good save on Kane, but he also placed that rebound. Sharp was just off to his right, wide open. Letty, put it in behind. Now the Panthers look to start back. Huberto turned it over to Bickle. Bickle moves in with a snapshot that was blocked by Kulikov. Brookbank held it in. Acted loose and Kruger to Brookbank. His long one. That was a knuckler floating up high. Letty kept it in. Kulikov for the Panthers. Turned it over to Nick Letty. Good shift by the third line. The D really helping out. Bad boys. Able to get control for the Panthers. Huberto gains the line. Looking for somewhere to go. Flipped in the front. Hacked wide by Boys moving up the middle. Boys center to Hubert. Oh, good pressure by Bickle and Kruger. They had him sandwiched and he couldn't get rid of an attempt from a good scoring position. Yeah, Huberto's maybe been the most impressive Florida Panther. He's very patient with the puck. He's got a good shot. And there you mentioned Brian Bickle just tying up the stick. Don't always have to knock him down. Just take away his stick. Good Branson to Gotch. Upshaw. Center it to Gotch. A long wrist shot. Blockered away by Crawford. Back to the boards and Peary. Brandon Peary gains the line. In behind looking for Bolick. And he greets Campbell rudely. He won the puck. Bolick sent it. Oh, and he just failed to connect on the pass. Kopetsky chipped it the other way. It's exactly what you want to do, what Brandon Bullock did, what he did as that first four checker, separate the man from the puck. And that's what he did to Brian Campbell, and then had the presence of mind to try and get it out front. He broke checked at the line. And it's going to get far enough for icing. 
The Blackhawks have won a lot of battles along the boards. This last one by Patrick Kane. Watch him on Kulikov. Lifts the stick, has body positioning. Kulikov goes down, his head up's the whole way. Can't make the pass, takes that shot. And as I mentioned, Tim Tom is well aware that to his right was number 10, Patrick Sharp. Jalmerson. Looking away, Fleischman. He looks for Versteeg, trying to center one. The Panthers wanted to get the D joining the rush, but it uh, jumped away from their D man up on the ice, and now the Hawks able to clear it to center. Taves gains the line. Jonathan Taves to the forehand, trying to stuff one home, and Thomas was there. Now Gilbert able to weave back to the neutral zone and chip it forward. The Blackhawks are doing a great job of the offensive blue line. They're not backing off too early, even though when Florida has the puck. And they're poaching some pucks right at that offensive blue line. Icing here against the Blackhawks. A break away from the pack by completing your degree. In partnership with the Blackhawks, University of Phoenix is offering the chance to receive one of two full tuition University of Phoenix scholarships to Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin residents. Applications are being accepted now through January 14, 2014. Visit phoenix.edu backslash Blackhawks to apply today. Here's Hansus trying to move in. Michael Hansus back to Sheldon Brookbank. His pass was broken up. Sharp got it back. Finds Letty to Brookbank. His shot is blocked by Campbell. In a situation to try and get that through, you've got numbers in front of the net. Unfortunately, that Brookbank shot blocked. He collides with Bugstad. The Hawks' Kane got control of it. Here comes Letty up the ice. Nick Letty's going to look to Kane, who has it now. Kane moves in, takes a look. The trailer is Seabrook, and the puck was rolling. He tried a long shot. That hit traffic in front. Huberdo will work his way loose, and Gotch. Will scoop it back into Chicago ice. Panthers changing there and pass doesn't work and it's going to be icing Chicago. Well, Saturday, join CSN for the 2013 IHSA football playoff pairing show. Go around the state for live team reactions as we reveal the brackets for all eight classes. Saturday night at 8 on Comcast Sportsnet or stream it live on CSNChicago.com. All right now, Kruger and Gotts ready, and Kruger able to pull it back. Keith, we'll head this Bickle, and in it goes. Shaw work on the corner, but Gotch came in, came out of there with it. Ulikov cleared it to center, missed Matthias, and now the Hawks get back. Keith up the middle for Kruger, Ben Seabrook will turn back. The Blackhawks have done a great job in the faceoff department, Pat. After two periods, they're at 63%. They've won more of their percentage than that in this third period. We should point out Yannick Perot, former Blackhawks, has been working with these centers. He's doing a great job. Bowling tried it loose. Unable to stuff it home, and the Panthers upstall with a hoister. Winchester helped by Gomez. Here he gets back. You see Winchester in behind. It's taken by Scotty Upshaw to Scott Gomez. His pass bounced to Gabranson along blast tip, and a good save by Crawford on he had some traffic right in front of him. And the zone then cleared. 
That could have been dangerous. That fourth line was out there. They're getting a little tired. A couple guys being able to change. Now Brandon Peary finally was able to get a change also. Hosa. Good stick by Barkoff at center. Fleischman didn't feel the pass cleanly though. Anderson checked in the corner and Hosa comes away. Hosa ahead for Tave. Trying to slip it away. Just missing Saad and roll to Thomas, who will hang out. We are almost eight minutes into the third. The Hawks off the pair. Our Illinois lottery, anything is possible. Flashback on this day in 1957. Robert Marvin Hull scored his first ever NHL goal in a 2-1 win over the Boston Bruins. 54 years later, on the same day, the Hawks unveiled a bronze statue of Bobby and Stan Makita outside the United Center. That is our Illinois Lottery Anything is Possible flashback. Wonderful tribute to the two greatest Blackhawks that have ever laced them up. It's just so awesome that color was included in those uh, wonderful statues. I'm not sure that's been done before. A lot of uh, statues I've seen since have incorporated color, but uh, up until then, I think everything had been bronze, and uh, once again, the Blackhawks setting trends. Yeah, they are unique. I think you, you hosted that night, didn't you? The, uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was a wonderful evening, and uh, it meant a lot to both those guys, Bobby and Stan. Of course, they've been welcomed back uh, with open arms to the Blackhawks. A family, and there's that color you speak of. It really jumps out of you. And of course, the most famous statue there, Michael Jordan, is, as you mentioned, all bronze. Uh, those certainly grab your attention. Well, John McDonough said it right that night. Who would have thought we'd be here doing something like this? Because the Blackhawks uh, weren't going to do it just because it wasn't sure it had ever been thought of before. And uh, if it had been thought, if there had been a conversation in previous years, it was a very short conversation. <laughs> Thomas grabs along with that. Gives me a chance to uh, send along a uh, shout out to, of a birthday greeting to a real good friend of mine and the finest caddy master in Chicago, maybe in the country. Fine lad who leads him at Sunset Ridge Country Club, Greg Kunkel, is turning 56 today. So I hope that uh, he and his wife, lovely wife Debbie, are having a good time. And I hope. Jordan Gaffin's being nice to him, finally. All right, here's the puck in behind. And Bolig wrapped it back. Oduya put it in behind. Bolig trying to steamroll to the front. And it jumped away. And gonna get, uh, will it get far enough for icing? Yes. And a whistle. Well, be sure to head out to the official road watch party this Thursday, October 24th, at Pop's Pizza, located at 18... Hit that 817 East Nurge Road in Roselle. Fans will enjoy a Blackhawks home game experience, and the first 100 fans to arrive will receive a giveaway item, as well as a Bud Light ice crew raffling off autograph prizes to the ChicagoBlackhawks.com for info. Now the Panthers, Barkoff will look to Verstig, back to Barkoff. He drives the center flight, but he scores! Chance. Oh, what a sweet pass by Barkov. One of the few times Florida gets the odd man rush. What a mishandled puck there by Brent Seabrook. It gets going the other way. Actually, numbers coming back, but they quit skating on it. And that one time, where Fleischman actually had to fall down to shoot this. Watch the pass from Barkov. And Fleischman looking like Brett Hull there. Almost on his side when he released that. Not a lot that Corey Crawford could do. And Florida's made a game of this, 2-1. Icing here against the home side. Well, we talked about it in that second period, and Corey Crawford stood tall, made some big stops. Of course, stopped that penalty shot play, but uh, it's a breakdown mostly in the neutral ice area. Barkoff putting that puck into an area that Fleischman had to shoot it right away. He did. And he's got them to within one. Now 
Now Sharp to Keith the long shot. Never got through, and Gomez able to backhand it out. Here comes Upshaw in on Seabrook. He shoots and a good save by Crawford. Rebound to Hanzus. Lending Keith out of the zone. Hanzus for Kane. Patrick Kane backhands it across the ice, but it bounced away from everybody and out. Kane back in there. Sharp on the other side. Back for Oduya. Looking towards Kane. It sailed over his blade. And now the Panthers, Matthias, acted it back in. Here's Oduya to Shaw. He's checked by Weaver right at center. Halfway through period three, it's a two to one Chicago lead. Shaw pressuring Weaver jammed the loose. Bickle's on it. Ryan Bickle back to Brookbank. Now Gotch. Has a second chance and played it across to Weaver. Gilbert waiting for a change to be completed, so the Panthers need to maintain control while changing them up. Hawks also have executed a player change. Here they come. Bugstad in against Brookman. Collision in the corner. They go shoulder to shoulder. And it's back to Gilroy along blast. Good save, proper rebound loose, and the Hawks have it. Bowling able to send Peary out. Brandon Peary against Good Branson. And that is picked up by Good Branson, who cleared it ahead. Dukes that along pass, missing Huberto. Carried on Gilroy with some back pressure from Bowling. And Huberto dropped it to Versteeg. He cleared it to Campbell up on the play. And good stick there from Peary. Now a turnover. Here's Kulikov. Dmitry Kulikov as the Hawks appeared to have possession and lost it. And Kulikov has tied the game. Looked like Brandon Peary was going to get this puck. A collision, Peary goes down, and then it's Florida's puck again. Actually, that was a turnover. It wasn't Florida's puck. Brent Seabrook throws it right out to Kulikov. And I don't think Corey Crawford was screened on this. Had his defenseman going out to the point to try and block it. Beat Corey on the glove side. Well, Joel Quenville has circled the wagons. He has utilized his timeout after the Panthers get two goals in just under three minutes. And it was once two nothing. Now it's square. Well, it's not very often that uh, Duncan Keith serves up. An unforced error like this. Blackhawks in pretty good position at this point. Peary heads over to the loose puck. Gets it free. Duncan Keith is head up. Oh, you know what happened? Barkov got his stick on that pass, and it changed the direction of the pass. It went right to Kulikov. A wrist shot from about 45 feet out. And it ends up in the back of the net. This is offside against Florida. All right, we have eight minutes remaining in regulation. A TV timeout. We'll come back to a 2-2 game in a moment. We'll go back to Florida. This is the a and &A. Airlines upcoming schedule. will be in Tampa Bay on Thursday night, and then a home-and-home set of games against the Minnesota Wild. They're in Chicago on Saturday, and then Monday will be up in Minnesota. All right, now it's a dogfight. 2-2 the score. 
as the Panthers have it in the offensive zone. So Petsky unable to pry it free at the moment. Push it, push it. Matthias spins it back. Gilbert sends it down low. Oh, do you retrieving? Wants Taves, who is checked at center, and now Marcel got it across to Tom Gilbert. Panthers trying to change on the go here. That happens. They have a fresh set of forwards. Kulikov, for the first time tonight, the crowd coming to life here in South Florida. Not a spur on the home team. Sharp wants to shut him down. Shooting and a save by Thomas. That seems to be the M.O. of a lot of teams playing the Blackhawks is withstand the storm, try to stay within a couple, and then pour it on in the third period. And, you know, whether it's the Tampa Bay Lightning, Carolina did that. Tonight it's the uh, Florida Panthers, Kevin Deneen and his Florida Panthers. And give them credit. I mean, they kept it with a win, too. Tim Thomas making some big saves, and they have taken advantage of their opportunities here in the third. Face-off win, but the Hawks couldn't make a, Chris, a clean pass, and here comes Letty from his own end. Brookbank. Andrew Stieg. Didn't get it out. Letty down low for Kane. Campbell beat him there. Hawks trying to change up the D. They're going to have a three on two against the first in once. The pass in the middle and Huberto had to just jump over his blade. Could have been a good chance. Didn't work out. He gets it in front of a shot. And the attempt from Barkov was blocked. Barkov from the corner. Dropped it back along with Good Branson. And Crawford didn't seem to have a look at that, but it missed the net. Here's Oduya trying to settle things down. Yeah, sorry, Pat. No, he didn't see that one. And the one before, too, he was charging out. Didn't have good footing, and it was a good thing it got blocked right in front of him. Andrew Shaw. Lost it as you get it. Pickle carried on. His shot blocked. And a hand pass will bring on a whistle here. Down to six minutes remaining in regulation. 2-2 two, two the count. Well, Johnny Oduya leads the Blackhawks in block shots and a key block shot here. Watch Barkov with the shot. He lays down his leg, gets it with his pants. Corey Crawford was trying to come out and charge. Stumbled a little bit on the play, but a huge block by Johnny Oduya. Panthers this far in a pass attempt. The race for icing will be it's washed off. Keith has to play it. Gets it up the boards and that puck got out of the zone. The Panthers are back in offside. So the third period problems for the Blackhawks continuing. Really quite amazing. In the first period so far this year, the Hawks are plus four. They've scored nine, allowed five. In the second period, they are plus eight. Goals for, goals against. In the third period, they are now minus seven. They've scored only three third period goals. This is their ninth game of the year. They've scored three. They've given up ten in third period play so far this season. Mosa trying to battle his way out of the corner. Dropped it back. Here's Keith. Here's behind. Dave couldn't. Get to it now, does the Hosa. Marion Hosa turns in behind. Spins it back. Keith wants Seabrook. Good stick there from the kid Barkov. Yeah, these Panthers playing with a lot of confidence now. They realize that, you know, maybe Blackhawks are a little shaken on their heels and they're going at it. Side goes back to Jomerson. Kulikov, pressured by Taves, gets help though from Campbell. Matthias got it out of there. <laughs> now the Hawks don't do ya. Ran out of room along the boards. Now 
Patrick Kane has an assist tonight. Dropped it to Jalmerson. His return pass deflecting way upstairs and out of play. Patrick Kane, you mentioned the assist. Goals in five of his last six games against the Florida Panthers. And you look at league leaders among U.S. born players since the 2007 2008 season. Patrick Kane, the most with 429 goals. The distant second, Zach Parise, 359. So the Buffalo born Patrick Kane lighting it up for the Americans. Four minutes remaining in the third. Now the race for loose puck. Sharp one's going to get there. Sharp cutting in. Shooting blocker save. Thomas, he gave a rebound, but good coverage on Kane by Gilbert. And the Panthers start back. Huge tag. Checked by Brookbank. Then he goes hard around. It bounced all the way to the other end. The race for icing, and Sharp was hustling, so Thomas had to come out and play it. Yeah, probably a good play by Thomas to make sure that Sharp didn't get it first. Panthers changing on the dump, and out comes Brookbank. Cleared it ahead. Long Mr. Bickle goes wide. Here comes the Shaw, who hacked at a good save by Thomas. He might have popped his groin again. He's had midsection troubles earlier. And yeah, that hurt him. I mean, he kicked out his right leg, and he's angry about how that felt. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Pat. He played the first game of the year and then tweaked his groin. Was out for the next four. Kevin Anine wants to know how his goalie's doing. He actually wants to talk to him. But Thomas is trying to figure out whether he can stay in or not. Well, this is real important. Anine really, he's, he's going to call a timeout, I think. Or at least he's getting the ref to talk. Here's the shot. And yeah, you know what? He just couldn't get up. He was kind of in that semi butterfly, tried to get back up, felt a tweak. And he's coming out, or it mm. looks like, I mean, he's heading towards the bench. The youngster, Jacob Markstrom, would be next up. And that is a lot of goalie right there. Markstrom is really one of those kids that's very well thought of down here. 6'6", six, six, about 200 pounds. And uh, looks like he may be pressed into service with three minutes to go. So Thomas trying to work on the oh, kinks to see if he can just, be looking. He yeah, can't move. He's, he's got to come out. You're absolutely right. I mean, what a key time in the game now for the Blackhawks. Markstrom comes in. He's absolutely cold. Game is on the line. Just under three minutes to go. He's got a big smile on his face, but I think more nervous laughter than anything else. And the message to the Blackhawks is going to be shoot often and shoot early. Shoot early and shoot often. I mean, this guy's absolutely cold. And I'm sure that's what Joel Quenville's reinforcing to his troops right now. One more look at it. And it looked harmless enough, but he makes that butterfly save. Just can't get up. Looks like it was the right groin, the right leg. And from overhead, there it is. He tries to push up on it, and it just wouldn't cooperate. So what an opportunity for the Blackhawks. Let's see how Florida responds. They're going to make sure that Markstrom doesn't see a lot of extra rubber. 23 years old, Jacob Markstrom. You see his numbers for this year. And we're back to the action. Well, Julia put it up the glass, held in momentarily. Yes, they do keep it in. Winchester dropped it back to Campbell. Landing Kulikov. Trying to bank it off the end boards. Got it to Gomez, whose pass picked off by Shaw. But he couldn't get it past Gomez. His feet picked off, though. Bickle comes out and bounced it in. Hawks changing here. There's Campbell. Put it to Kulikov. Now Gotch. Bounced it deep. Lopeski put it back. Weaver put it across. A shank by Gilbert. And then Kopetsky spins it in behind. 
Buck taken away by the Hawks, and out comes Tate to Keith. Bosa shifted in behind, but Weaver for the Panthers to Kopetsky going off the glass. Needs help to get it out. And Matthias went as deep as they changed. 90 seconds remaining in regulation. Jalmerson in ahead. Here comes Hansus. He mishandled it as he tried to drive the net. That's too bad. He might have been able to get a shot out there. Florida doing a good job not playing in their own zone. Blackhawks have not had any looks at March from yet. Jalmerson along one finds Kane. Drops it to Sharp. Around a check. Cutting and shooting. Markstrom his first test, which he passes with a right shoulder stop. Well, Patrick Sharp would like to have that one back right into the midsection. You see him mad at himself there, right into the bread basket. Didn't really test Markstrom. But you mentioned, Pat, a big guy at 6'6". That's just in his crest as he goes down in the butterfly. You want to maybe reaching for it, either his glove, maybe blocker when you're coming in on that offside. A relatively easy save for Markstrom. Weaver shot it back the other way into the final minute of regulation. Letty now cleared it ahead. Kruger into the zone. Centered it. Shaw, we couldn't catch the pass cleanly. Or might have had a decent chance. Gilbert pushed it out for Florida. Shaw won a board battle, and now they head up the ice. Andrew Shaw. Uh, that's real to be offside at the Florida line. And the Blackhawks will be upset with themselves. In control of this game, and it looks like it might be heading to overtime. And it's funny, too, that the first goal that Florida scored, not much of a breakdown. Just the coverage was there, maybe a little lackadaisical coming back. Fleischman with that shot, and that got the ball rolling. That pass miss going to be icing, so the Hawks will get an offensive zone draw opportunity with Taves on the ice. Well, the best faceoff man will get a chance here against likely the kid Barkov. Yeah, Jonathan 10 and 1 after two periods, 10 wins, just one loss, and a huge faceoff. Before it is on. Here he is against a 19 year old. And the draw. Bursti got to a 50 50 puck for Florida. Campbell, the Fleischman. And they'll dump it in. That's going to finish the third period. So well, the Florida Panthers storm from behind to grab at least one point in the standings. And the Blackhawks let a two-goal lead evaporate, and that will force extra time in South Florida tonight. Welcome back to the BB&T Center. The game will head to extra time, and after a scoreless first period, each team got a pair heading down the stretch. Yeah, on the power play, Jonathan Taves. Great heads-up pass from Duncan Keith. A redirection on the backhand. That gave them the 1-0 lead. And then Jonathan Huberdeau dragged down from behind by Hansus. It's a penalty shot. Corey Crawford with a big stop. That was in period number two, as is this shot by Brian Bickle. Huge goal at the time. Gives them the 2-0 lead. But then it's the storming back by the Florida Panthers. Fleischman off a sweet pass from Markov. And just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. The game tying goal. An unfortunate bounce here. Duncan Keith, just as he's passing it, gets his stick slashed. Intended for Ben Smith. It goes to Kulikov. That's an unassisted goal. And that's how we stand after 60 minutes. All right, under, now underway in overtime. Oh, do you? 
Made a good pass. It's taken down by Jarmerson. His long shot just missed the target. Bounce loose to Barkov, and the Panthers move away. Kulikov tripped over to the blue line. Oh, Taves tried to turn quickly. Couldn't get the puck under control. Had he, might have been gone. But it didn't work out that time. I think it would have been a breakaway. It might have even hopped on him just as he was doing the button hook. Both teams changing here. Kulikov with a minute gone in OT. Here comes Fleischman. Left it for Huberto, whose shot was blocked by Seabrook. And Hawks try to counterattack. Kane's got it. Patrick Kane crisscrossing with Shaw. Dropped it back to Keith. To Kane. Shaw to the front. Had to go in behind for it. He then was checked by Gilbert, who made a good play. And the Panthers now start back. Yeah, good body positioning by Gilbert. Just stepped in front of Shaw so he couldn't get to the loose puck. Gave him time to just make the backhand pass and the easy breakout. Gotch bounced it out of there. Here's Letty. Looking to pick up some speed. He gets into the zone, goes wide. Letty turns deep, takes a look. Dropped it back, long shot sharp. It was off some traffic in front. Good job by Nick Letty, just hanging on to the puck. Instead of forcing it out front, waited a little longer, saw a wide open sharp. Made a good play against the rush of boys there. The Hawks sharp. Two on two to the line. Sharp crisscrossing, trying to move in on Campbell. He prevented a shot. Sharp across for Jomerson. That was bouncing it, just flip it forward. And the Campbell, the Campbell led Panthers, have, to have his pass broken up. Gilbert goes back to Campbell, who went across to Matthias, who will drop it back. And now listen, some Hawk fans lose puck into the zone. You can hear a let's go Hawks chant from several thousand Blackhawks fans in attendance. And that drew the booze from the locals. Here comes Oduya moving in to Bickle. His shot missed the mark. And bounced all the way out as he missed it to the long side. Quite often it's going to leave the zone. Well, that's happened a couple of times in this overtime. Earlier it was Nick Jalmerson with the missed shot. That time Brian Bickle. Now back comes side. Gains the line, drives it in. He shoots. Oh, and he just missed an ear post. Great explosion up the ice by side. But unable to quite finish it. Boy, he's got deceiving speed. And when he gets half a stride on you, he really exploits it. Gets that left leg out to protect the puck. Run it from his backhand to forehand. Just put it up over the glass, or over the net. There's Steen stripped of it. Kane, two on one the other way. Kane's got a breakaway to win the game. Patrick Kane, and a save by Markstrom. Rebound back to Seabrook. 70 to go. Keith, hot pass. It bounced through to Kane. Patrick Kane left it for Seabrook. Now to Keith. Wants Shaw down low. Andrew Shaw to Seabrook and went out of the zone and a whistle. Well, the Blackhawks are killing themselves with missed shots because it kills the play. Uh, there's no chance for a rebound. Kane with great speed, fakes forehand, goes backhand, and just shovels it wide right to the post. You know, see, Shaw was, uh, Shaw was coming in behind for a rebound, and there's that opportunity by Saad getting that left leg out, going upstairs, pulled it actually a little wide. So we've had four attempted shots in this overtime. All four have missed the net. And it looks like it might be a timeout it by is. Kevin Deneen. Kevin Deneen is utilizing his timeout, so we can uh, take a look at our KFC fan cam. who have made the trip 
hopefully for a Blackhawks victory. And you saw all those black, and we see that a lot, Pat, wherever you go, Blackhawk jerseys in the stands. Florida Panthers now in the Atlantic Division. They're playing in against Detroit, Toronto, Montreal, Boston. The thinking there is that they're hoping a lot of snowbirds will come down, watch those teams play here in Florida. And we're getting a lot of Chicago fans watching here this game tonight. All right, now the draw. Sharp circles. Jalmerson left it back for Sharp. Streaks in, looks to Ossie, tees it up, Mars, Markstrom, good save, and a kid who came in with about three minutes to go in the game. He's only been tested a couple times, but he's been sitting around for two and a half hours before facing any live action. Yeah, and he's looked pretty good. I mean, the first one in the breadbasket, this one a little more difficult. Great speed up to the neutral ice area, and a nice dish here. The shot, sharp with the pass, Hosa with the shot. You know, relatively easy on the scale, but the important thing, no rebounds. People going to the net, Markstrom covers it up. Half a minute remaining. There's the Panthers, Weaver. Heard it across, and that's outside. Campbell blew a bit of a wheel. Puck was bouncing on him. Ryan Campbell spent most of the summer back in Chicago. He and his wife celebrated the birth of their first child. Little Harper Shea Campbell, little girl born at Northwestern Memorial Hospital this past summer. Panthers get the draw. A dozen left for Jalmerson. Squeezed by Bugstad to the boards. Scores loose. Kulikov centered one. Here's the shot by Fleischman. And a last second save made by Corey Crawford. The Panthers got one more bid to get the winner. Yeah, Fleischman's got a sneaky shot. Wasn't in the wheelhouse, so he kind of had to reach back for it. Didn't get a lot on it. First a hot pass by Kulikov, had to settle it, then the shot. And then pad and stick of Corey Crawford doing the job on the shot, gets it off to the side. The well, Hawks get out shot, 8-7 in the third. The totals now 29-22 favoring Chicago, but a shootout is what's going to decide the second point tonight. Welcome back to Florida, where Blackhawks head to a shootout with the Panthers to try to decide the issue here. 20 saves so far tonight for the man wearing number 50. Well, he was real solid early. Not tested a lot in period number one. Period number two making some key saves. Good rebound control for the most part tonight. And a huge stop at the time. The penalty shot on Huberdeau. Absorbing pucks in his body, but then a couple got away from him in the third period. A couple of the glove side. So it'll be interesting to see what the Florida Panthers and their shootout shooters decide to do. Also a little bit interesting from the Blackhawks shooting perspective. Because Jacob Markstrom came into the game late because Tim Thomas got hurt. Now, before every game, Hawk, the Hawks to talk about the opposing goalie and where that particular guy might be vulnerable well I don't know if uh, goaltending coach Steve Weeks has gone down to the Hawks bench uh, Stefan Wade used to do that be, before every shootout he would get onto the bench actually and provide a couple reminders about what particular goalies tendencies are and I do not see uh, Steve Weeks down by the Hawks bench not that uh, most goalie coaches would do that but Wade was a guy who did and so now, uh, whatever the Hawks were thinking about Thomas, they need to forget because they got a big <laughs> six-foot-six guy that they're going to have to face in the, this shootout. Yeah, and, and as, as talented, as skilled as the Blackhawks are, Pat, they've been in three other shootouts. They've taken a total of nine shots. They have one goal. Just one goal to show on nine attempts. And uh, obviously, this could decide who wins. Well, it will decide who wins this hockey game. 
And uh, because of those numbers you mentioned, I mean, Joe Quinville, the last couple of shootouts has actually changed his shooting order. Now he's going to go back to the way he usually has approached the shootout with the captain going first. But you remember the last couple of shootouts, Kane actually shot first rather than Taze. But that's uh, over the last few years have generally done fairly well in shootouts. This is the guy who usually leads him off. And he will do so again tonight. Taves in on the kid, Markstrom, who comes out to meet him. Taves with speed, shooting five hole, he scores! Boy, that's his bread and butter, isn't it? On the shootout, freezes goalies and then puts it right between their legs. I mean, Markstrom closed it pretty quick, too, a big guy. He was coming down on those pads really fast, but that shot just perfectly placed. 20-year-old Jonathan Huberto. The Calder Trophy winning rookie of the year in against Crawford. Pulls up, shoots Crawford. Makes the save. He wasn't sure, but he had made the stop. No, but he showed good patience again. It was Huberto on the penalty shot. It's Huberto here in the shootout. And that's just waiting for the shooter to make the first move. And that's what Corey Crawford does. All right, Patrick Kane. Is next up for Quenville. Kane now doing a little weave. He slows right down. Waits to Kelly every which way. He got the goalie down, couldn't lift it. And that would have been no goal anyway. They're going to rule that he would have. He pulled it back. You must continue to advance the puck. And had it gone in, it would not have counted. Yeah, you're right. The puck has to keep moving forward. He gets it to the side. And then, as you mentioned, kind of goes back in the other direction. Brad Boys is next up for the Panthers. He's got... 32 shootout goals, second most among active players. Not this time. Crawford makes the stop. Well, that's a real big stop. Both Huberdo and Boyce scored in their last shootout. That was against Minnesota. And Boyce saw some room there. Saw a big gap in the five hole. Corey gets it with his stick. Patrick Sharp can win it for the Hawks. Sharp. Moves right up the middle, stick handling, open net, nice move, Hawks win! Hawks win, Patrick Sharp gets the second point for the victory with a beautiful maneuver to stick handle a six foot six goalie right out of the crease. Well, he scored the other shootout goal earlier this year. Great patience from the goal scorer. You see the reaction from the moms. Happy phases throughout by Patrick Sharp. A lot of confidence there. Great patience. And he finishes this thing off. So the Hawks let a two-goal lead get away, but they still get the win. And Alexis pursuing perfection player of the game is that man right there. The captain scored the first goal of the game tonight. Then opened the shootout scoring. And the Blackhawks take their sixth victory of the year. They're 6-1-2. and two with the win here tonight against the Florida Panthers. Well, that's the story from South Florida for our terrific CSN crew and for Steve Conroy, Pat Foley. Hoping you enjoyed the broadcast. We know you enjoyed the outcome, even though you were biting your nails a little bit. It was 1-2-0. It finishes 3-2 Chicago in the shootout. We'll see you again on Thursday night from Tampa Bay. Patrick and Dennis are in the Chicago studios.